what's going on YouTube? It's been a while since I filmed something about my car. Um, it's been a while for that because you guys have been watching everything that happened in Dallas, Texas. Uh, but today, I know you guys like a lot of the car detailing videos, but today we're going to be heading over to my boy's house. Um, he just bought a, a house in Coral Springs with his uh, girlfriend. It's a beautiful house, huge driveway. And he's been asking me to come over to uh, do a, a wash. Uh, and, and he has two unique cars. And uh, when we go over there, we're going to see one of the unique cars because the second car is not done yet. But um, if you guys obviously see this thumbnail, we're going to be washing my car and also his car. And we're also going to be applying a protectant on that vehicle. So I'll see you guys when we get there. Yeah, hopefully uh, the wind doesn't knock that camera down because the camera's already had a couple like um, cracks on it. It should be good. But anyway, so today we're here at Raphael's house. Like I said earlier in the video, what we're gonna be doing today is washing both cars. Uh, I got my F80 M3, like you guys seen previously in other videos, but today we're, we're gonna be looking into Raphael's. What year is this Supra? 1998. 1998, and what's so special about the Supra? It's what they call the unicorn. It's Why is the, it a unicorn? It's the manual twin turbo from the factory left hand side. So I guess with the, with the process of this car, how long did it take you to find it? Because I know that you've been wanting this car since you were young, right? Yeah, I've been wanting this car for years. I'll say probably like 10, 15 years. But I started looking for it actively for about two years now. And I finally yeah. found it about close to a year ago. Okay. And here's, here's the thing is, how many miles does it have on it? Currently 46, seven. I bought it with 45, so I'm driving too much. <laughs> So you're driving too much, but you know what? You have to enjoy the car because you can't take this to the grave. That's true. Um, I'm not gonna remove the camera off there to kind of show you how dirty it is, but I'll take my other camera, I'll show you guys real quick. So we could definitely say that both cars are extremely dirty. Look at all that pollen. And you can see some of like the, you have sprinklers and stuff that turn on. I guess. Yeah, his car is pretty dirty. My car is pretty dirty too. Lots of breathing. And you dust. just put new wheels on, right? Yep. What wheels did you put on? Some Struss. I forgot exactly what model, but they're custom made, three piece, with a custom offset for the car, with the, how I wanted to ride. I wanted to run the, tri the R888s, because we're going to be putting some power down at some point. And so we'll start off, what I like to do first is I like to start off with the wheels, because yeah, I've told you many times before, like uh, water from your system, from your house, it's not purified. You can get the purified system, which you're probably going to do later on, right? Eventually, yeah. Um, so what I like to do first is the wheels because that takes very time consuming. I'm sure your wheels are dirty as hell. Yeah. Right, from all the brake dust, brake mine too. Dust. Um, so we're going to start with the wheels first. After that, we're going to start with the exterior. We're not going to rinse the car first yet because you don't want that hard standing water to stay in your car because you'll let um, water etching from all the contaminants that inside the water, and it's gonna mess it up. So let's grab some of the stuff out of my trunk. But uh, I just carry three buckets from my house full of car cleaning products. If you guys watched the videos before, I have a ton of car cleaning products. So I definitely brought a lot with me. And you may have seen them on the last previous, a few episodes of the car cleaning episodes. Your uh, first actually, video. Was it the first one? Your first video. I don't know. Like you had a, uh, he had an F13 M M6. No, the GTR one. Oh, that was way, that was way back. But that's your first video. Uh, I, uh, yeah, that was the first video. <laughs> but uh, he also had a M6. Um, shortly lived, I think it was maybe that year. And he got rid of it and, tr and sold that and bought this instead. Obviously a big upgrade, but in my eyes, I'm still married to the German life, so. What I'm doing now is getting rid of all the stuff that's inside the bucket that we're not going to be using now because what we're going to be doing is we're not polishing his car. I'm not a professional at that. Um, he's probably going to take that to a professional and get that done. But we definitely want to throw on a protectant on the vehicle um, in between them because he also has a GTR, a Nissan GTR. What year is that one? 13. 2013? 2013. So he has a 2013 GTR and it's in the shop, right, for some big power? Yeah, finishing up some upgrades, uh, some nitrous. Nitrous? Yeah, a couple of things. Obviously, you can see that he's uh, the need for speed. I'm like all show, no go, which I'm proud of. I don't care. <laughs> so some of you guys are like real detailers. We don't have all the essential tools, but we have a lot of tools here. 
Um, check with him later on. He's going to have the garage all done up and he's going to have a pressure washer and all the gizmos and gadgets. Um, so this is on, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So like I said, what we're going to do is start with the wheels first. Rinse the wheels off. Just don't get the paint. Oh man, this is real dirty. So there's obviously a lot of different pads you could get. You could get ceramic pads that give you a little bit more or less brake dust. Um, I haven't changed them yet for that. Um, I still have the stock OEM brake pads, which if you guys have F80, you guys know it produces a lot of brake dust. But right now, like I said, you don't want to hose the car off because you don't want that hard standing water uh, beating out with the sun. It's going to leave water etching. Do you and, do yours? Uh, I'll just do the first one. Just rinse the first one, it's fine. But there's different um, products I have. So what we have today is we have PNS Brake Buster, and this is probably one of the best wheel cleaners you have out there. That I think it's cheap, and I have it in an Adams Polishes bottle. If you guys seen, because I haven't really bought a bottle for it. Um, but this is one of the best bang for your bucks. It cleans your tires and also your wheels without damaging your wheels. Because there's other products out there. I think I used maybe Meguiar or something one time. Remember? Yeah, strip the paint. Strip this paint off. <laughs> Yep. All right. So, obviously the camera's watching you, so you, you know how you know how to wash your uh, wheels, right? Yep. So I got one of these. This is a uh, really nice and soft. This is a uh, um, Incredible brush that I got from AccessGarage.com, and this is extremely soft microfiber. It gets into your barrels, so if you're worried about scratching your barrels, if you have expensive wheels like these wheels right here or the wheels I have, but what's good about this is that you could kind of see it's working onto the wheels and it's eating a lot of the, the gunk off. Also, I have this too. Yeah, that's helpful. So this is, you don't have to use this, but what you could do is um, it saves you on product. So you don't have to use a lot of the products. I diluted this with water. And all this is is a PNS Brake Buster along with some water. And the, the ratio with the air and everything inside, it's gonna allow it to be more foamy on top of your, uh, your dirty wheels. Are you sweating already? No, not yet. Really? I will soon. So even if you have brand new tires, you should always clean your tires because the outside of the tires are always dirty. And if you want tire shine, anything you put on your tires to stick on correctly, you want to definitely clean them up. And then you can use this on the tires. So what tires do you have on here? R888s, R's, G2. How do you like them? How do you like them? I like them a lot. They're a little loud. They're not too loud if you have, you know, some exhaust. So okay. you can't really hear them. Yeah, yeah. But they're definitely louder than OEM. But they ride really nice, especially on the dry. And they do a decent job on the rain. I know most of these R compound tires are pretty much like a yeah. slip and slide once it starts raining. But this one does a pretty decent job as long as you have, you know, some decent thread left. Especially in South Florida where it rains a lot in the summertime, you definitely don't want to be hydroplaning on the highway because then you could ruin your beautiful you know, history right here. Is this considered antique yet? Not yet, right? In two and a half years, you'll be. So in two and a half more years, you could kind of have a uh, antique plate antique on here. Antique plate. Are you gonna put one on? Oh yeah. It's also cheaper on the insurance. Is it? Yeah. Didn't know that. There you go. So you want to do is um, definitely scrub the tires too, because you have this product on there. And the way for you to know if the tires are dirty, you can see it's turning brown. And the brownness is all the dirt, um, whatever that's contaminates that either from the factory or just at the tire shop. A lot of that stuff's coming off. And what I like to do is too is to do it multiple times. If you see multiple brownings after and after, you definitely want to keep doing it until it becomes like a white foam. Have you cleaned your barrels yet? The barrels? Yeah, inside. As much as I could with Have this. Have you used this? No. Try to use this. Let's rinse that off. Get a little wet. Get a little wet, wet, you know? Let's see how dirty these bad boys are. So we're not gonna have this issue with the GTR anymore. Oh, you having ceramics? At least on the front wheels for now. I'll do the rears later. I'm not sure if I do ceramics on the back, if I do a small brake kit in the back and go 15 inch wheels. So the ones you bought were legitimate? Yeah, they're for a ZR1. 
but they make a conversion for the GTR. Okay. Much cheaper than the, Niz the Nismo version. And it does the same exact thing. It is all about when you modify a car, you gotta be smart about it too. Right. And my car has been in the shop for about, I would say, a week and a half. I've had some warranty work that had to be taken care of, so the car is extremely dirty. Um, and of course, I tell them not to wash the car because what they do is they run it through an automatic car wash. And if you guys don't know what an automatic car wash does to your car, it does a lot of damage. How's that looking? Good? No Most spots there. there. Yeah. If you want to use the mitt, the mitt kind of helps out too. Definitely helps a lot. So with the BBS wheels, they're extremely hard to get into the barrels. I used the uh, Incredible Brush here, and it, it's thin enough where I can get inside the barrels where it doesn't damage, you know, barrels or even the outer face. And that's why it takes so much time to kind of clean the wheels because you kind of have to go through the step. I remember when I was younger, mm -hmm. I used to wash my car weekly, even when it really wasn't that dirty. I remember. My father would be pissed, wasting in, all his water. In New York? Yeah. <laughs> Rain or shine, or snow in that case. Nah, there were some times where I would wash my car literally in 40 something degrees and I'd bring Jason and he'd be pretty pissed, you know? Like, why, why are we washing a car in 40 something degrees outside? I don't know, for me, it's therapeutic. Yeah, I agree. It's relaxing. Not when it's like really, really hot, but. It's better when it's colder than when it's hot. Yeah. And right now, are we technically in summer yet? No, well. It feels no, like No, not yet. I think officially it's May something. So we're not in summertime yet, but it feels like it. It feels like it. I'll say it's at least 85 right now. 85? At least. And it's what, 10 o'clock in the morning? Pretty much. Raphael's already almost done with two wheels. I'm not. I just got one wheel done. <laughs> so the only downside we'll say about these wheels is that... Amount of spokes? Yeah, there's a lot of spokes. <laughs> there's a lot of spokes to clean the wheels, and that's why it takes so, so much time. But these BBS LMs, and I've been asked many times, like, what do you think about them? I think they're amazing. They're an iconic set of wheels. Uh, they've been around for so long. Um, and they're a two-piece wheel. And you were saying you have a two-piece wheel, right? Three. Three-piece wheel. Yeah. And Strauss is based out of uh, Florida too, right? Correct. Miami? Miami. And the reason why I use a uh, microfiber mitt is because when you put your hands inside, you're not gonna destroy your freaking hands on like some of the, like the hard points, like these rivets or, or bolts. I had gloves rip. Yeah, and trying and, to do that before. And to be honest, like I'll link it in the description. You'll see in my description is a whole bunch of car cleaning products, and those are the ones I legitimately use. I'm not just saying it because I have it there, um, but this is on there. This is from Amazon. I think this I bought two mitts for like 20 bucks, and I've had these for a year and a half now, and they're pretty durable. And it's so thick where I can get both sides. Do a couple swipes and it's clean. And that's my hack.
you neighbors know what a Supra is? Uh, probably not. They probably think it's an old car. Yeah. I mean, technically it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> they probably think it's just an old car. Correct. Where'd you find this Supra? I know the Supras are, these days are harder and harder to find, right, as you go? Yeah. I, I put the limitations to be the whole country. So I wasn't really worried about where I'll have to travel to go get it. So I looked anywhere in California. I looked, you know, Hawaii, anywhere that they had a good Supra for sale. I was willing to go and see it. But this one was in Indiana. Indiana? Me, yeah, to me it was my opinion was the best one that they had available at the time. And it came from a private collector that happens to have a dealership. So little by little he starts he started to put out his supras that he has on his collection. He has many. What do you mean many? How many does he have? I don't know. I know that for sure in the past couple of years because I follow his website. Yeah. I seen What's it called? Um I have to double check for you. Maybe you can put the description down below. Yeah. But I've seen at least 20 Supras sold by him in the past two, three years. But in my opinion, this is the best one. He actually has one right now for like 150 grand. 150? Yep. How many miles is on it? 38,000. It's a little bit less than mine. Yeah. And it's black on black. But it has already a couple of mods. Okay. Because yours came with a tan interior. Mine came with a tan interior. And I wanted something with no mods. Okay. So this was the best one. I didn't want nobody's unfinished project. Yeah, so basically what you have so far is um, wheels. Wheels and suspension. Yeah, and an exhaust now. And the backstory, I was supposed to be here yesterday, but the unreliable weather man said it was gonna rain yesterday. And it rained in the morning, but then it pretty much stopped. Can't trust the weather man. No, especially in Florida. There has been car meets that has been canceled because of weatherman and he ends up to be, you know, a beautiful day. Yeah, because I don't want to come here, wash the car and then get rained at. You get rain going home. Yeah, that sucks. Not going to lie, it happened to me a couple of times before. It sucks. It's not like we live far from each other. You know, like technically on the map, we live about 13 miles away. But there's so much traffic in South Florida that it takes me about 35, 40 minutes sometimes to get here. Yeah. And just to let you guys know, when I edit this video, it may be a multiple series because I know we're going to be going in depth into a lot of different things in this video. So enjoy the series. This first episode um, is going to be more about cleaning the tires, cleaning the wheels, and the importance of cleaning the tires and wheels. So as you can see, like I said earlier, you definitely want to clean your tires because even if it's brand new, there's a lot of contaminants that's on it from factory and from everything else. And you can kind of see right now with the camera. So that brown foam there means it's dirty. Do you have any uh, protection on the car? Do I have any what, sorry? Protection on the car? Um, the car came with a uh, wax, but I'm not sure how well it was done because I saw wax throughout all the seams. You did? Yeah, like and dry wax. This, wax doesn't last long. Have you had the car for how long now? I have it for about a year and some now. Okay, yeah, so it's probably not there anymore. Yeah, it's not there anymore. So could you tell the camera why did you pick those wheels? So I had a Strass on my GTR, three-piece set, and I know the owner, and he's a friend of mine, and he makes really good quality wheels. You see them pretty much everywhere in the world. And he just happened to be a good friend of mine. So since I had it on the, on the GTR, I figured I would represent local business and a friend on the set the wheels that we're going to put on the Supra. And what's the sizing of the wheels? Do you know the size? Yeah, and the rear is 18 by 12 and a half. And the fronts are 19 by 10 and a half. 
And the offset, I don't quite remember exactly. What tires do you have on it? I mean, like what size tires? Uh, the size tires that I have in the back are 325, 3018s. And on the front are 285, 30s, 19s. Gotcha. Yeah, so the car sits, you know, a little with the, re the rears sticking up a little bit because these cars are tend to squat once you put the power to the wheels. I don't have it yet, but soon. The what? The power. Oh, the power on this? Right. I wasn't certain what I was going to do at first, but... Yeah, you I, thought you were going to, like, get rid of it? No, I thought I was going to leave it stock at first for a little while as an investment, and then eventually sell it. But realistically, I'm so happy with the car, I might as well make it my own. Yeah, That's I, why I started, you know, modifying it. So as you can see, um, cleaning wheels and tires are very tedious and it takes very a lot of time. Um, it's easier when you have wheels like what he has, a lot easier than what I have because there's less spokes to deal with. Um, and there's more room to get into the barrels, and which is really important. And on, on my wheels on the other side, I'm gonna show you a different product that I've been using too. Um, it's Adams Polishes Wheel Cleaner. Um, there's pros and cons about that wheel cleaner. It's a little bit more abrasive. And when we get to that point, I'll show you guys and I'll tell you guys exactly uh, what my thoughts are about it. So obviously you can see all the copperness and the brake dust on there. And it's pretty it, good though. Yeah. Just gonna rinse it off. And you can see a lot of that brake dust is not coming off because it's caked on. But um, I'll show you guys this product. Adams Polishes Wheel Cleaner. This is the bottle. Adams Polishes Wheel Cleaner. Uh, what's good about this is it's a little bit more abrasive and when you spray it on, as I'm doing it right now, it smells really bad. It smells like rotten eggs. <laughs> and, um, oh yeah, that's the one I don't like. Yeah, that's the one you don't like. But you can kind of see that on the rotors, it's turning purple. So it chemically reacts the brake dust where it helps it um, eat off the surface. And when I mean eat off, it just breaks it down, easier to clean. And do I think you need to use this all the time? Not necessarily. If you're the type of person that cleans your car weekly, like me, you don't have to do it every single time. I'm doing it because it looks Ooh. good on camera. And he smells it. Ugh. Um, but it looks good on camera, and obviously you can see right there. And a lot of people, they forget. They forget to do the lug nuts. And what's the really main importance about doing the lug nuts here is that you don't want anything to get caked on because it, it just takes a little bit harder to get off when you really want to take it off. So I know Matt Mormon, a person I really follow from Obsessed Garage, as long as you maintain your car, it's going to be easier to clean and, and maintain. So not everybody would have the audacity or even the, the mindset to want to you know, keep up with this type of uh, grueling activity, but I don't mind it. And this brush here, as you can see, a lot of the products I use is from different brands. I'm not really married to one specific brand. I just use whatever works. So that brush I was using before uh, for Basically, the where the bolts are is from uh, Chemical Guys, and that brush is actually pretty decent. I bought like a pack of four or five. It was like twenty something dollars. It wasn't bad. Um, I've had that for over two and a half years, maybe only oh, close to three years, so it lasts pretty long. And this mic uh, microfiber madness incredible brush. It has like a plastic liner, so all that metal inside is not going to be banging across your wheels. That's why it's really safe to use. In the wheel cleaner, you don't want it to be sitting on your wheels for too long and drying on your wheels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse it off real quick and I'm going to spray another coat on.
tell you something though, the floor is hot. What? The floor is hot. The floor is hot? Yeah. Put those sandals back on. Yeah, I'm about to. And some people are gonna think, do you need to use that much product? You don't, but I have so much at home, I don't mind it. I don't mind uh, indulging in some of the products I had because all these Black Friday sales, I just load up on it. So as you can see, I'm going through the barrels, or actually uh, uh, the spokes of the, of the wheels, the face of the wheel and I'm just doing a couple uh, movements and it's cleaning it. Um, what I can say about this product compared to the PNS, this product is a little bit more consistency, it's a little bit thicker. Um, it's more like a gel sli uh, slimy feel compared to the PNS uh, Brake Buster. But if I have to compare both to both, I still rather pick up the PNS Brake Buster because it's a multi-purpose. You can clean your wheels and also your tires because it cleans rubber too. Well, speaking about that, I gotta clean my floor mats. So Rafa, I've yet to describe the smell of this product. What, what, what would you say it is? Oh man, I don't think, I, I think you get demonetized. <laughs> It's really bad. I got used um, to it. This one's it's a hint of like a fruit flavor, but they try no, to cover there's, it up. No, there's zero fruit in there, man. Maybe Are that really blue? stinky one that people don't can't eat it. Manda mandarinia, what else? How's it called? Oh yeah, the one that smells like ass. Yeah, maybe that one. That that fruit. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like growing up, my grandparents used to eat that. And you used to cut it open. It 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 has spikes on it, right? Yeah, it, yeah. it kind of looks like a jackfruit. Yeah, but. Rotten. I forgot what it's called, but I'll, I'll link it in this. I'll put a photo on what it's called. Um, but yeah, I, can, I guess you could say it smells like that a little bit. Definitely smells like ammonia and rotten eggs. I guess. But this is safe a... on your wheels, though, so I don't think it's going to be damaging your wheels. And if it wasn't safe, I wouldn't be using it on my really expensive BBS wheels. Let me get the other brush. So this would be the, the first episode, right? Uh, I'm not sure how long this episode would be, but. Um, we're gonna do multiple series because we want to go in depth and there's also a lot of things to talk about, right? I want to talk about your car. Upcoming plans. And if you have any tips for some people that are washing their cars themselves, by all means, chime in. You know, what you've seen worked and what you've seen that doesn't work. I wish I could chime in more on the BMW community, but it was yeah, short-lived. It was, it was short-lived. All right, so I, I only had exhaust on that thing. It sounded really good, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it was a, a straight pipe. V8 twin turbo. Yeah, and I straight piped it. I kept the stock down pipes, so didn't throw any coals and I didn't want to tune it. But just that, it made the car a, a whole lot more fun. Oh yeah, and some springs, some lowering springs and spacers. That was all I did for that car. But it definitely made it much more fun. But I didn't drive it enough. And I wanted a, something that was gonna appreciate in time and there's not really that many cars that that has that feature yeah you're not gonna have that on the f13 m6 some of the bmws have definitely gone up now actually be the honest, older ones what's unique about the one he had um it was a six-speed manual you don't see that in a manual and did that take you a while to find yeah it took me a, probably as long as it took me the supra to find yeah because i was pretty random when you're like oh i'm gonna get m6 i'm like yeah okay <laughs> It was one of 23. One of 23, yeah. One of 23. They made a total of 68 cars that were manual on the coupe. And 23 of them were their competition package. Mine was one of them. To be honest, when I had an F30, my next car would have been M6 Grand Coupe. I remember you're looking into the M6. Four door with the six speed. I remember. They're rare too. This is what I got. Ice cold Yeti. Yeti. All right, guys. So this ends episode one of this wash series between a 1998 uh, historic uh, Supra that has a ton of mods coming up and also my 
uh, like Baca would say, or any of my other friends would say, piss colored yellow FADM3, uh, which is Austin yellow. Um, tune in for episode two. Episode two, we're gonna be filming right now into episode whatever we get into. But um, I wanted to break this down to kind of go a little bit more in depth. But um, basically, these are the wheels. If you guys have any questions about the wheel cleaning process, leave a comment down below. I'll link his Instagram, and he may possibly start a YouTube channel in the future. I'll link that also too when he updates that. But anything else? Stand by. Stand by for episode two. So damn high, I gotta drink this Yeti.